So Jim, you've spent a lot of your work on phage. What's a phage? It's a type of virus that kills bacteria. So perfectly safe from our point of view. Does it always kill the bacteria? Or does it sometimes infect them and live there happily and spread? Um, yes, so you're referring to what are called temperate phages where they have two very different life cycles. So with those, they can infect the bacterium and either insert into the bacterial chromosome and just live there happily. The bacteria doesn't know the difference um, until they pop out. Or they, when they infect the bacteria, they can turn on their genes and convert the bacterium into a phage factory. And after 40 minutes or so, they blow the bacterium open, release lots of progeny that go on and infect other bacteria. Sounds like a very potent potential antibiotic. Well, it was proposed as an antibiotic before we had antibiotics. Really? So phages were discovered roughly about 1918, and then there was a person who's very well known for pushing the idea of phage therapy in the 1920s and 1930s, went around the world establishing centers, institutes for using phages as antibiotics. And it was even tried in the U.S. Eli Lilly offered phage preparations for treating infections. This was before we knew anything about phages. We didn't realize that some infections of humans are caused by viruses. Phages can't touch those. We didn't realize that phages are very specific for the bacterial hosts that they infect. So <clears throat> if you had a whooping cough infection caused by Bordetella and your phage worked against Salmonella, taking no phage idea. wouldn't do anything. Right. Um, so it wasn't until the Delbrook School of Phages that we started understanding how specific they are, how they work, and by then antibiotics were coming online, and in, at least in the West, antibiotics totally bumped phages. So what's the Delbrook School of Phages? Well, um, it's kind of the earliest school of molecular biology where they, they studied particular phages, but they were trying to understand how life worked. Right, so they were discovering the nature of inheritance, genomes, um, and things like that. So that was the Delbrook School. And they used phages because they had lots of advantages. Is this Max Delbrook? Or? Max Delbrook, okay. yes. Um, phages were very convenient, right? Their life cycle was anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes long. You could grow up billions of them in very small volumes. Um, so quick generation time, and they had phenotypes that were easy to study so they could put So what's together. the status of using phages to counteract infections now? Um, it's coming back in the West. So there are places in East, what we call Eastern Europe. Um, Georgia has an institute. I think Poland has practiced phage therapy the whole time since the 1940s. So for people in the U.S. that have a chronic infection where they want to try phage therapy, they can go over to Georgia. This is not Atlanta. This is um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Eastern Europe. So are there good controlled studies being done? Some of them are starting now. So there are a couple companies in Europe that are trying to do phage therapy, right, you know, develop the science behind it and ask whether it works and how often it works. But the problem is it's for the places that practice phage therapy now, we don't have the data to know how well it works. So this sounds like one of those areas where it might not be profitable for a large pharmaceutical company to get into it. That's correct, because phages are so specific. If you're required to demonstrate the efficacy of every phage you use, right, rather than just to demonstrate, okay, a phage works and so we'll approve all phages, if you have to demonstrate efficacy for every phage you use, it's never gonna be profitable because phages are so specific. But there are some infections um, that are very common and very serious and we don't have any good antibiotics for, might it be worthwhile for those? Um, certainly so, if, and I think one way they're getting around FDA approval, um, clinical trials in this case, in this country, is for compassionate care. So you have someone that's got an infection that's not treatable by anything we have, and there are ways to actually allow that person to be treated with phages, but there's a lot of red tape you have to go through to make that happen. Hmm. So another big opportunity that might be impaired by regulations and things. Yes, I suspect that it will happen. It just won't as happen as fast as it might have with Or maybe in some other country as well. Well, that that's right. Or in agriculture, right, where you don't have the regulations in place. If you can show it works there, then the pressure will be on to approve phage therapy for 
humans. I suspect right now you could sell phages as herbal remedies, right? Really? You can't, well, there's no FDA approval for those. Mm -hmm. You have this homeopathic medicine industry, so you can buy all kinds of things. You just can't make claims that they're going to cure things. Let's go on in a minute to how phages co-evolve with bacteria.